Good morning, everyone. I'm Keely Hopkins. I'm the state director for the National Rifle Association for Arizona, Oregon, and Washington. I know Arizona has been covered, so I'll focus uh, on the Northwest. Um, with Washington and Oregon at this point, unfortunately, it seems like both of them are in a race to see who can catch up to California's gun laws the fastest. Historically, Washington and Oregon have both had relatively good gun laws. Um, in the last four or five years, however, things have changed. Um, we've both lost seats in the legislature, but we've also seen several initiatives filed within the Northwest. Um, so in both of these states, we're seeing anti-gun groups funded by Bloomberg come in and use the initiative petition process to pass what they weren't able to get through in the legislature. In Washington, for example, we've had three major initiatives since 2014. It started with the private transfer ban where you're not allowed to transfer a loan of firearms to another individual without becoming a felon. We also had extreme risk protective orders without due process. And then last year we had initiative 1639, which unfortunately did a variety of things. One of them was classifying all semi-automatic rifles as assault rifles, which we know why they do that so that next year they can come back and ban assault rifles. Um, in Oregon, we're seeing the same thing. We had groups file two initiative petitions last year. One was an outright ban on all semi-automatic firearms, and then another was mandatory storage. And the worst part of this is they impose strict liability. So if somebody were to access your firearm and you didn't have it stored locked up, you would be held strictly liable for anything that's done with it. In Oregon right now, both chambers are controlled by a supermajority of Democrats. We also have a very anti-gun governor. We do still have several Democrats that are pro-gun, which has been how we've been able to hold the line. This year, we faced the biggest threat that we've seen so far, which was an omnibus gun control package, Senate Bill 978. This bill had maybe five, seven provisions in it, uh, it would have legalized age discrimination so that FFLs could refuse to sell firearms to adults under 21. It again had the mandatory storage with strict liability. It also would have required you to report lost or stolen firearms. If you failed to do so, you'd again be held strictly liable for what the criminal does with your firearm. It also would have vastly expanded gun free zones to include public buildings, colleges, um, the airports, but interestingly enough, it also included any land that's adjacent to any of these properties, which when you add all of that up, that's a large area that you would no longer be allowed to lawfully carry your fire. Thankfully, the Senate Republicans refused to pass something that would have made Oregon's law by the gun owners become criminals overnight. So they used one of the only tools they had in the super minority and they did a walkout. By not showing up to the floor sessions, they were able to prevent a quorum so that the, the Democrats in control couldn't conduct legislative business. So because of this, we were able to hold off in, long story short, no gun control passed this year in Oregon.